Praise the Lord. Welcome to Word Working You, where we believe when you allow the Word of God to work in you, it definitely worked for you. Once again, my name is Minister Felicia Applewhite. How are you doing, Facebook family? It is good to be here with you once again. I do have a word from the Lord. It's going to be a very quick word, but yet and still, it is a word from the Lord. So let's get right into it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for who you are in our life, Lord God. We ask you to continue on blessing us and keeping us, Lord God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll be looking in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 13. Um, once again, we'll be looking in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 13. 13 is a very familiar passage, but I want to bring a little different take to it um, than maybe you heard before. Um, and the, um, the title of this is, Who Disciples Are You? The title of this is, Who Disciples Are You? What I'm going to say to you may going to sound kind of harsh, but it is a necessary word. It's a necessary word in, the necess in this necessary time. People are leaving this earth quickly. Um, every time we turn on the TV, people are dying. And when things happen in the earth, it's a sign of something that's taking place spiritually. And there is a lot of people that are dying. And so we have to begin to ask ourselves, what is happening? What is happening on, on, on this? On, on, what is happening in the spiritual realm? And what is happening on the earth? But I want to pose a question to you today. And I want you to really think about this. Who disciples are you? Who do you really belong to? And I'm asking you this question because I want to challenge every believer out there and to remind them what they're supposed to be doing while they're on this earth. We know that you're going to get blessed. We know that God is keeping you. We know that it's your time and we understand that it's your time to be blessed and it's your time to rise. But you're not here just to be blessed and just to be to rise. There is an assignment that is on your life that's from the King of Kings. And I want to remind you of your assignment. So let's read what uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 13 says. It says, you are the salt of the earth. Who is the salt of the earth? Who is they talking about? Us, us born again believers. We are the salt of the earth. But if the salt, if we loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? The Bible says it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. We is, we is what preserve this earth. We is what keep light in this earth. Matter of fact, if you know anything about salt and you know anything about food, what a butcher does when he get his his fresh feet, his fresh meat, he takes salt and he puts it on his meat because the salt preserve it. It keep it from molding. It keep it it it, it from getting old. And that's what we are. We are the salt of the earth. We preserve things. We keep things. We keep the earth staying alive. But if we if we lose the seasoning that God has given us, what good are we? We're no good. We can't help no one. And so I pose the question again to you, who disciples are you? Are you the earth? Or do you belong to Christ? Because one of the things about being a disciple, we are influencers. We influence people. We influence people's behavior. We influence how people think. We influence people's attitudes. And ask yourself, how have you been influencing people? Have you been influencing them to do positive or has you been influencing them to do negative? Have you been influencing them to go to church or you have you influenced them not to go to church? Have you been influencing them to pray or have you have you not been influencing them to pray? Or is you so caught up in you that you have not witnessed or spoke to anyone about your king Jesus? I pose the question to you again, who disciple are you? Matter of fact, not only do we influence people's behaviors and attitudes in the way that they think, we also stand up against injustice, injustice. 
That's a part of us being a disciple for God. And we already know that as people or as people of God, that sometimes we don't always, um, even though we're standing up for unrighteous, that things don't always go, go the way that we want to go, but it helps it helps the community when we stand up for injustice and when we when we influence people to do the right thing. It helps the community that we live in practice righteous behavior, and it also help 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 them make lawful um, um, lawful laws that can help us live in our community in peace. So I ask you again. Who disciples are you? Because you are the salt of this earth. Are you busy preserving your own home? Are you busy preserving your own kids? Are you busy preserving your own circle? Because when God created you, he didn't just create you for your circle. He didn't He didn't just create you uh, to be a blessing for just your four and no more. He created you to be a blessing for your whole community that you live in. It is important for us to make sure, especially in the time that we live in, that we remember what we are called to do. It is so easy to get sidetracked. I have got sidetracked many of times. And so I'm not just talking to you about something that I know nothing about. I have been sidetracked. I have been off focus. And God had to get me back focused and reminded me that I am the salt of the earth. And there is a responsibility he has given me as being a part of his kingdom. And that's to make sure that I witness and I get the word out about his love. Now, we could share his love in many type of ways. Some of us have all different kind of platforms. Some of us have Facebook platforms. Some of us have Instagram platforms. Some of us have a pulpit platform. Some of us um, is on our job and we use that platform to share the word of God. But it doesn't matter what type of platform that you use. It's important that you season the area that you in with the salt that God has given you, which is the love of Jesus Christ. I just want to make sure today that you know who disciples you are. You belong to the kingdom of God. And there is an expectation that God's have, have for you and what he expects you to do. And I just came on just to remind you that it's important that you share the word of God. It's important that you share the love of God. It is important that you pray for others. Others need your prayer. Others need your prayer. You know, sometimes I'm in a grocery store and sometimes while I'm standing in line, my eyes be fixed on an individual that I don't even know. And I just get to really thinking really hard about them. And I'm like, I don't even know this person. And God began to have me pray for them. You don't know. It may not be no one in their family that is saved. It may not be no one that they're around that know Christ. And it was you that God called to pray for that person. I want you to be much more aware of your uh, surroundings. Because you never know. You may have been called to that individual. Let's not get caught up in, the, in our own life, doing our own stuff, and we're not being disciples for Christ. Make sure that you are a disciple of Christ because a disciple of Christ doesn't just sit around waiting for them to get blessed. A disciple in Christ doesn't just do things that blesses them. A disciple of Christ has a heart for people. My Bible tells me, he who wins souls is wise. I pose a question to you today. Are you winning souls? Because a part of being a disciple is winning souls for the kingdom of God. Are you winning souls? Are you um, persuading people to give their life over to Christ? Are you persuading people to try Jesus Christ out? Because that's what you're supposed to be doing. But folks, that's all I have for you. God wanted me to let you know that you are the salt of this earth. And it's important for you to remain salty. It's important for you 
to remain witnessing to people out there about the God that you love. And maybe you're watching and maybe you don't know Christ, but you want to give your life over to the Lord where the doors of salvation is open. The Bible tells me, according to John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that whosoever is you, that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, you want to have everlasting life. I don't know who don't want everlasting life. A lot of times it's not that people don't want to live, live forever with Christ. They don't know how. And that's where we, as God disciples, come in. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a prophet. You just need to be a disciple of the Lord to lead someone to Christ. So if you're watching with a real sincere heart, repent. Repent of your sins. Repent. Let the Lord know that you need him right now. You can't do it all by yourself. Repent. Just say, Lord, I apologize. I repent for all of my sins and all of my wrongdoings. And I need you in my life. After you repent, acknowledge. Acknowledge what? Acknowledge that Jesus came on this earth. And he lived a sinless life. And he died on the cross for you. And then not only did he die, he rose the third day. And after you do that, declare out of your mouth. Declare out your mouth that you are saved. And now you belong to the kingdom of God. And the Bible says the angels are rejoicing in heaven because of you. Yes, they're rejoicing because of you. And I rejoice too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And for the born again already believers, just remember when you out and about, be conscious of your surroundings because there may be a soul there that God wants you to pray for. And who disciple? Who disciple are you? Do you belong to Christ or do you belong to this earth? Well, you have been watching, we're working in you, where we believe when you allow the word to work in you, it definitely works for you. Until next time, see you later.